how are you viewers today we continue with a series of questions dealing with the more concept and today we will be basically looking at question c3 of the december 2020 science paper 2. the question reads elena used the apparatus shown below to determine the energy released when ethanol burns. Elena used the apparatus shown below to determine the energy released when ethanol burns. So we know that ethanol is a fuel, therefore we expect it to undergo a combustion reaction with oxygen to produce heat energy, carbon dioxide and water. Okay. Now, why these products, it, it, ethanol, is an organic eh, compound. Uh, so, that is the apparatus. We've got a thermometer, a conical flask, and ethanol inside the conical flask. Let's now proceed to the first part of the question. They're saying, draw the displayed structure of ethanol draw the displayed structure of ethanol now according to uh, nomenclature of organic chemistry or the naming of compounds in organic chemistry we know that when a compound has one carbon atom it will bear the 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 first part will bear meth so it will be meth for two, it will be eth, uh -huh. and just like that. So here, because it's eth, okay, eth tells us the number of carbon atoms, which is two, and the last part, which is the NOL, tells us that it is an alcohol. Now, with alcohols, the functional group is an OH functional group. So whatever we draw, the structure is good, supposed to have one OH group, two carbon atoms, the rest should be hydrogen atoms. And therefore, the, display, the displayed structure will have two carbon atoms, okay? And we said one OH group and the rest should be hydrogens. And that is that. This is our displayed structure for ethanol, okay? Now, because it's ethanol, uh, we do not need to worry about the position of the OH because whether we change and put the OH on the other carbon uh, atom, it will still be the first carbon atom. So we are okay with that. So for writing this, you score yourself two marks. All right, we proceed to question B. Question B. Question B1. Write a balanced chemical equation for the complete combustion of ethanol. Write a balanced chemical equation for the complete combustion of ethanol. Now, complete combustion, it means that the ethanol was provided with abundant oxygen so that it completely burns. Now, for incomplete combustion, it means there was a deficit of oxygen. Therefore, one of the products will be carbon monoxide instead of carbon dioxide because there is a deficit of oxygen. So we are going to have ethanol, which is C2H5OH. So that will be our ethanol. So we'll have ethanol reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water like that so ethanol reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water now we are going to balance by inspection so take note always balance hydrogen and oxygen last so because the only elements we've got here other than hydrogen and oxygen is carbon so we need to look at it the number of carbon atoms on the reactant side so on the reactant side 
So on the reactant side, on the reactant side, we have two carbon atoms. While on the product side, we only have one carbon atom that is on the carbon dioxide. So we need to write a two in front of the carbon dioxide. Then we can proceed to hydrogen. Okay? Then we will proceed to hydrogen and oxygen. So oxygen and hydrogen, there we are going to, if we start with hydrogen, hydrogen we find that uh, the ethanol alone has got six hydrogen atoms. Therefore, it is important that we go to the water because there is only two hydrogen and it is the only molecule containing hydrogen and we put a three so that we have six hydrogens on the product side and so just the same as the six hydrogens on the reactant side then we now turn our attention to the oxygen oxygen we have two times two oxygens on the carbon dioxide making it four plus the three uh, plus the three oxygens on the water now four plus three is going to give us uh, seven now remember this side on the reactant side we have three coming from the oxygen molecule and one coming from the ethanol itself so we've got one ethanol on the uh, one oxygen on the ethanol plus six on the oxygen giving us seven so the number of oxygen atoms they balance so this is uh, the balanced chemical equation we turn we now turn our attention to b2 we now turn our attention to b2 b2 is saying when 4.6 grams of ethanol is burnt when 4.6 grams of ethanol is burnt 5.4 grams of water is formed calculate the mass of water formed when 13.8 grams of ethanol is burnt when 4.6 grams of ethanol is burnt 5.4 grams of water is formed calculate the mass of water formed when 13.8 grams of ethanol is burnt three max now here our three max imagine they give you three max for calculating it means there is work so first and foremost we are told that 4.6 grams of ethan when 4.6 grams of ethan 5.4 grams of water is formed so there is a relationship here between ethan and water and this is the relationship we are going to first uh uh, right so 4.6 will produce 5.4 grams then 13.8 which now we've been given that when 13.8 grams is burnt what mass of water will be produced so 4.6 grams will produce 5.4 13.8 will produce x we are looking for x okay we are looking for x so we will cross multiply when we cross multiply when we cross multiply the relationship that we have is 4.6 grams times x which is 4.6 x is equal to 5.4 times 13.8 like that then we are going to divide both sides by 4.6 so that x remains alone so when we do that we are going to have x is equal to 5.4 times 13.8 divided by uh, 4.6 now when we do this the final answer we are going to get is 16.2 grams so 16.2 grams of water so when 13.8 8 grams of ethanol is burnt 16.2 grams of water 
is produced. That is where your three marks comes in. All right. Uh, chemistry usually seems to be a pretty, pretty difficult when it comes to uh, calculations. The only advice is find a relationship. Uh, the compounds that are mentioned in the question will actually should actually be related to each other. So in this particular case, you can see that they mention ethanol. They give the mass of ethanol, okay? Then they give a mass of water, and they're saying this is how much water is formed when this much of ethanol burns. So there is a relationship between ethanol and water. And this is the relationship that we get to help us uh, uh, calculate the mass of water. Therefore, the 13.8 should always come under the mass of the, of the ethanol because it is also for ethanol. And the X, which is what the question requires us to do, should come under the water which they want. Okay? All right, let's proceed. Now, when, when we come to C, part C, part C is saying, define, define a fuel. Mm. Define a fuel. What is a fuel? Now, basically, fuels, all fuels have got one thing in common. They produce energy. And what type of energy do they produce? They produce heat energy. Okay? How do they produce the heat energy? They burn. So all fuels burn to produce heat energy. So we can safely say that a fuel is any substance that burns to produce heat energy. The term burn is the same as undergoes combustion combustion is burning so now combustion is the reaction between a substance and oxygen okay to produce heat and other products so here we will say a fuel is any substance that burns to produce heat energy so any substance any substance that burns to produce heat energy okay so that is a fuel a fuel is any substance that burns to produce heat energy let's now go to c2 c2 is saying hydrogen is said to be a clean fuel explain what this means hydrogen is said to be a clean fuel explain what this means mm. clean fuel here when you look at the word clean means that it does not pollute okay because pollution makes the environment dirty okay it makes it Pollution is the introduction of harmful substances into the environment. So a clean fuel will not produce anything that is harmful into the environment. Therefore, what we are going to do is we are going to say, this means that the combustion of this fuel, which is hydrogen, does not produce any pollutants. Okay? This means that the combustion of hydrogen does not produce any uh, pollutants. No pollutants, nothing harmful, and everything is as good as the way God intended it to be. Thank you very much. I would now like to say thank you for everyone who has been a part of this channel. If you're new to this channel, Please, don't forget to subscribe, and if you like the video, don't forget to like the video. The congratulations is...
for making it possible for this channel to reach its 100 subscriber mark. Thank you very much and never stop uh, supporting the channel. Thank you very much.